So the final part of this unit, I'll just go over some of the things that you get exceptions that are not to do with coding. So we sort of had a little bit of example there with a the runtime error at the end of the fourth part of the video. Um, and remember, this goes back to what I said in the first part, an exception happens whenever Python encounters a, a situation, which means it can't go on. An exception does not necessarily mean there is a problem with your code. It might be what your code is trying to do that's the problem. So what we're going to look at here is things that um, are not coding problems, but they're operational problems with your code. That doesn't mean they're not your problem to fix out, to work out what to do about. And often these situations, you, you do want to put try and accept blocks around and then take appropriate corrective action, or at least tell the user in a, in a helpful way what the actual problem was that was encountered. So the first set of things that we're going to go through are OS error. So OS error is a general purpose error code, which means you asked your computer's operating system to go and do something and it couldn't do it for some reason. Um, so in other words, that's saying Windows gave up trying to do what you're trying to do or said you can't do that. Or Mac OS X said you couldn't do that um, for, for some reason. And then there are some specialized versions of OS errors. So things which are types of OS errors that you might encounter to do with handling files. These are file exist error, file not found error, uh, and permission error. So we'll show an example of OS error in just a second, but just to go through the file ones. So a file exists error will happen when you try writing a file um, as a new file, but that file already exists. And so it's your computer operating system saying, I can't create a new file called data.txt because you already have a data.txt um, and you haven't asked me to overwrite it. You've asked me to create a new file. Conversely, a file not found error happens when you ask it to go and read a file and that file doesn't exist. So you say, your computer's come back to you and said, I can't read data.txt because there is no such file data.txt for me to read. And then a permission error happens um, when you're trying to read or write a file and your computer's operating system is saying, yeah, the file exists, but I'm not letting you read it or write it for some reason. Uh, there could be various reasons on this. I mean, on, on multi-user operating systems, that could simply be you don't own the file, something else owns the file. Windows and Mac OS X can lock you from reading certain files, particularly if you're not an administrative user of the computer. Uh, and then sometimes it can simply be down to um, another program has got the file open, is working with it and won't let you touch it. And Excel is a particular um, example of a program which tends to do this. So if you're trying to read or write a spreadsheet file and you have it open in Excel, the chances are it'll come back and tell you it's got a permission error. Um, so again, those are the sort of things you can you commonly encounter. Say so OS errors could be a little bit more obscure, but here's an example of me generating one. Um, I've asked um, using the OS module, I've asked it to go and close um, a, a file with a file handle number. So that's a, a number that Python is using to keep track of what that file, which file that actually is I'm talking about. Um, and I've just made up a number. And so unsurprisingly, Python says, I don't know about any file number 10. You've never told me about a file number 10. Um, and so it throws an OS error because the operating system says, don't know anything about that. What are you talking about? Um, so I mean, obviously you can encounter these things in slightly more subtle sorts of ways, but when you see an OS error, it's not a problem with your code. It's a problem with what you've just asked the the computer's operating system to go and do. Of course, it might be that your code is asking your operating system to do something stupid. So for example, um, if you ask it to read a file before you've created it, well, yeah, that's gonna return a file not found error, but it's really a problem in your code, not a problem um, with the operating system. Um, whereas things like permission errors, because Excel's got the file open, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your code. It's just that you've got to recognize that your code is running in an environment in which things are not always quite predictable. And so if you're writing robust code, then you want to guard against that and say, OK, if I have a permission error, 
than, oh, well, maybe I should wait a second and try again, or um, maybe I should just tell the user, I'm sorry, you know, the file was opened by something else, I can't get at it. Um, those are all valid things to go and do, but um, just letting your code fall out the permission error is probably a little bit unfriendly. Uh, another one you might find are various sorts of arithmetic errors. So again, arithmetic error is the general uh, exception, and it comes in several flavors you might get. Floating point error, overflow error, and zero division error. And I've already shown you how to generate a zero division error. You simply divide something by zero, um, and it will give you a zero division error. And so it tends to be the most likely thing you're going to go. Interestingly, if you're using NumPy, then NumPy does not actually, by default, raise an exception. So if in NumPy you try and divide one by zero, um, so if you have an array full of ones and you do um, that divided by zero, NumPy will print out a warning message saying, oh, you just did something a bit stupid, and then return not a number. Um, but if you're just working with straight Python integers, you do one over zero, you're going to get a zero division error. An overflow error is somewhat similar. You can get it when the result of a calculation exceeds the biggest number that you can be storing in what's normally a floating point number. Um, okay, so here's a zero division error. You do one over zero, as I said, it's fairly obviously what's gone wrong. So this is an example of giving you a, um, an overflow error. So in Python, whilst an integer can store as big a number as you like, well, until you fill your computer's memory up with trying to represent that number, um, floating point numbers have a limited range and precision. Um, it's quite a big number you can store. Um, it's about 10, um, 10 to the power 90 something odd, um, or even maybe it's even bigger than that. Um, so it's generally, there's no problem. Um, but you can exceed that level. And this bit of code here deliberately goes out of its way to create a, a, a huge number. And eventually it gives up and tells you that there's an overflow error um, and that the result is simply too large to be stored as a floating point number. If you see overflow errors, it's almost certainly you've made some stupid mistake in the calculation. Um, and you want to sort of work back and work out where where that went wrong. You've tried dividing a very, very large number by a very, very small number when you should have multiplied it or something, something like that. Floating point errors are um, even less common, um, but you can be triggered if you if you sort of go around and um, kind of specifically ask NumPy to uh, raise errors rather than just returning warnings. So as I said before, with NumPy, it doesn't tend to raise errors by default, but you can tell it, hey, actually, I want you to raise an error because I am so confident that I'm not going to do a stupid sum that if we do do a stupid sum, I want you to, to go and really complain at me about it. Um, and so this is a little bit of code that just goes and does that. Um, that slightly complicated with line is just basically saying, if I try and do something stupid, raise an error. Um, and I then try and print the square root of minus one. And it says, oh, no can't go and do that um, and return to floating point error. Um, so that's not a valid thing to go and do um, at all. Um, so that's an example of where you get a floating point error, but it's kind of a bit more tricky to get them. Assertion errors are what happens when you use the assert keyword, which we'll discuss in the next unit. So generally speaking, you use assert um, as a programmer to verify that something is true. It's kind of an aid to debugging your code. So catching assertion errors inside try and accept blocks is almost always a stupid thing to go and do. I mean, if you've gone to the hassle of putting the assert statements into your code, um, or, the, or another programmer has done that, then you can be pretty certain that there's a good reason why they've asserted that something ought to be true, and simply going and catching them, ignoring them, is a really, really dumb idea. So um, almost certainly you don't want to go and do that. You just need to know that the assertion error is the thing you get when you do assert. So here I'm doing a kind of absolute trivial case. I'm asserting false. And then if I assert a false value, I get an assertion error. And I can use the assert statement to even tell me exactly what, um, what happened there. 
Um, and as we'll see in the next unit, this makes a search a particularly useful thing, but you can say if you're, you're checking whether a function's always working, whether it sometimes gets bad data, you can put a bunch of assert statements in that assert whether, I don't know, a certain argument is greater than zero or a certain argument is a string. And if it's not, you can then have it raise an assertion error with a message that tells you what, what it thought the problem was. Uh, and then the final one I want to come to is keyboard interrupt. So keyboard interrupt is a type of exception in that if you try and interrupt your program, you're saying stop doing your normal sort of execution and do something else. So if you're running in um, uh, something like a console or in Spider, and you're running your program and it gets stuck in, a, in an infinite loop, you can hit Control C, and eventually the uh, Python will work out you've tried interrupting it, and it will raise a keyboard interrupt, um, and that's a type of exception, and so it will cause your program to stop. In a notebook, you can't use control plus C um, because of the fact your browser is going to grab control and C and think you're trying to paste, copy things. Um, but instead, there's a kernel interrupt function uh, in the menu so that you can use that does the same thing. Um, so in this example here, um, after I printed a helpful message, I just go into well, true, pass. That's just an infinite loop that does absolutely nothing. Um, and so then if I use the interrupt function or I press control C, I get a keyboard interrupt. You can, of course, use try and accept block to catch those keyboard interrupts, and that then stops your program from being interrupted like this. Of course, you, you have to deal with the fact that you've gone into a try and accept block and you might have to restart something, but you can make your code uninterruptible like this. Of course, that's not very friendly if your code, in fact, ends up in an infinite loop doing nothing. Um, but um, it, it is possible to do that. So that's the end of uh, this unit. So over the various sections, I've tried working through the, the most common um, exceptions you might get. I'll just finish by mentioning that um, one of the wonderful things you can do with Python is you can define your own types of exceptions. And so if you're using some sort of module, you might find that it's raising other sorts of exceptions that you've not previously encountered or you've not met in this, in this description. And I've certainly not gone through all the possible exceptions you might ever encounter. I've gone through the ones that are the most common. Um, that can be really useful. Um, it's a kind of advanced topic as to how to go and define your own exceptions um, and use them. Um, and it can be very valuable. You can give very kind of detailed information about what's going wrong with a particular um, problem in your in your program or an unexpected situation in your program. Um, generally speaking, it's with considered good form to um, when you want to find your own fun your own exceptions to make them uh, subtypes to make them more specialized versions of one of the common ones. So that if someone doesn't know about your particular type of special exception, but it's a type of value error, then they can use try except value error and still do something sensible. Um, but just to make you aware that you might come across other exceptions, and sometimes those specialized exceptions might turn out to be specialized versions of type error or value error or runtime error, uh, and that's absolutely fine.